Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. If you would like to learn how to make a beautiful peach cobbler in the lodge cook it all, then y'all stay tuned. Alright, so here's how we're going to prepare our peach filling for our cobbler. I'm going to take my microplane and I'm just going to zest a, a lemon half here. About the zest of about half, maybe a little more of the lemon. So we're just taking that outer yellow part off of there. This one's kind of got a big nipple on the back of it, so it's a little more difficult. So the zest of half a lemon. This uh, is a pretty juicy one. I hold my hand out to catch any seeds. Okay, and we're going to get the juice of the whole lemon in there. It's going to be a couple tablespoons of lemon juice, and that's going to keep your color nice and bright on your peaches. Now you'll notice these peaches, I left the skin on them. I love the skin on my peaches, but if, if you don't care for it, uh, you know, go ahead and peel your peaches first. Now some of these were clean peaches and some of them were uh, the other type, which are a lot easier to get the pit out of. We're just tossing them in it and we're gonna try to stay low sugar. These peaches are really sweet. So I'm only gonna put in that's about a tablespoon of brown sugar. And you need just a little bit of brown sugar to start getting the moisture flowing in these guys. I've tried doing it completely no sugar and it was okay. It wasn't fabulous, but just a little bit you'll find. There's a lemon seed mist there. So toss them real good in that. Okay, next thing we need, a little bit of cornstarch. We'll start by sprinkling it just a little over the top, giving it a little stir around. We're just looking for it to get kind of thick, thick looking. And this is gonna help all the juice from these guys when they start cooking to thicken up and kind of set that as a, like a filling. Let's see, it leaves a little more. This amount of this amount that was about a little less than two tablespoons cornstarch. Like to get it all nice and wet. All right, now sprinkle of salt and time to put this in the refrigerator and let the let these uh, start working their magic here. So we're following this recipe here in the lodge uh, booklet that came with the with the cook it all. This is going to be the topping for this uh, cobbler. Now they did theirs with mixed berries. Berries are not in season here in Florida this time of year, but peaches are, certainly are. So we're, that's why we're using the peaches instead. So for dry ingredients, it's two cups of all-purpose flour, six tablespoons of granulated sugar. And I did consider kicking back on that, but since we uh, kicked way back on the sugar with, in the filling, think we can get away with that right there um, everything in moderation right all right and then uh, it's got three and a half teaspoons of baking powder so that's going to be a tablespoon and a little bit so that's a heaping tablespoon for us mix that in there and uh, three quarters it, it don't even give you the amount this is three quarters kosher kosher salt. So I know the hard tire mix is not three quarters. I'm saying three quarters of a teaspoon of kosher salt. This is regular salt. should be fine. My kosher salt is really uh, coarse, so I'm going to go with regular table salt there. And that's the dry ingredients. And the last ingredient is two cups of heavy cream. So we're going to give that a wait until we actually get this on the fire and get those peaches started before we put the last ingredients together. But we're ready to go. All we gotta do is 
put the cream into the flour mix, mix it up, put it on top. guys so the instructions say to put that lodge cast iron cook it all on a bed of coals so I don't know exactly how many is in a bed you know it's not like the Dutch oven where we can just count them so I'm just gonna lay them all out there Ooh, and them jokers are hot but you know it's a big piece of iron so it's gonna need some heat and them jokers are hot too I'm gonna go ahead and just lay it on them, wiggle it down in there. And they're all the way around it, all the way out to the rim. All right, so now that our peaches are gone, we're gonna go ahead and start adding this cream to the flour for this topping. I have never made a topping for a cobbler like this before. So we'll see how it turns out. It's going to be pretty soupy, I'll tell you that. Uh, let's go ahead and follow the recipe with the full two cups of heavy cream. And there's no oil or lard or butter or anything else in here. So I'm interested to see how this how this goes. All right, the sun's really bright. I hope you guys can see this. It is really hot out here right now too. This all nice and bubbly now. I would I would call that bubbly. So we're gonna go ahead and it says just to spoon this mixture over the top, and the picture looks like they just kind of put it in little in little blobs around the the pan. Probably should start in the middle. It is rising already. Of course, it's 95 out here right now. If we're going to leave any space. That's about all it's going to take. Quite a bit of that. So I want to leave, I don't want it to be all bread. So I'm going to leave some spaces. Now our next thing is, and <clears throat> put the lid back on. And they say to put your charcoal right on here. Which, you know, that's our griddle. That's probably the best part of this whole lodge cook at all as far as how well it works and now they want me to put the charcoal right on this cooking surface well it's seasoned I'm a little apprehensive I've never cooked anything on the top of any of my Dutch ovens or put you know after I've had charcoal all over them but we're gonna go ahead and follow the directions do what they say and it says just to spread them out evenly all over the top So there we go. I have now have two full chimneys of charcoal. It's Kingsford Long Burning. One under it and one on top of it. It's been about eight minutes. I'm going to go in and take a quick look at it. It's starting to brown the topping. It's really bubbly. I did kind of move a little bit of that fire out from underneath it. I don't want my peaches to burn. This recipe was meant for berries, which have a lot more water. So it kind of eased it off some of that bottom fire. So I went in and took a peek at it, and it's browning really well in the middle. Uh, just kind of like a, a regular Dutch oven. So the edges need a little help. So I just scooted all of our coals out toward the sides. Only going to need a couple more minutes. We'll also see what it looks like. at this point, I scooted the coals out to the outside, and I grabbed as many as I could reach. Um... There's still a couple right under that center ring, 
but for the most part, I scooted all the rest of them out from under there. Uh, just trying to prevent the bottom from burning. But it should be just about ready. So let's go in and take a look. Alrighty. Let's go in and see what she looks like. I'm going to have to call that about done. I might put it on just a little more. Just brown up a little more around the edges. We're going to rotate the lid when we do that. Just one more couple of minutes, that's about it. Okay, another tip is don't get those charcoals too close to the edge. That little rim is pretty short too. Your ashes will start falling over it. Then when you move it, it's going to end up down in your wherever you're cooking. So we'll put that on the lodge stand over there. We'll go ahead, we'll pull this off. portion here was still fairly warm. I took it out to the water hose, hit it with just a little water in the lodge cast iron brush. This little guy right here. Got those ashes off of before they have time to set. You can see now, yeah, most of the ash is gone. We're going to have to put some seasoning on that while it's still warm. So while we still got all these coals going on the table, go ahead and put the griddle back up on a trivet. That get hot. Going to go ahead give it I'm gonna give it some olive oil right around the top we'll get our lint free cloth spread that out let that re-season now after having those coals on there guys let's go ahead and plate this up we got our bowl right here I'm gonna go ahead and we'll see if it's gonna release I'm gonna gently cut a piece with my spoon here the top is nice and crunchy I'll tell you that it looks like it's releasing and I don't see any burn on the bottom so let's go right in our bowl with it just like that now there's a little caramelization on this peaches but they're not burned I was really worried about that. So, right in a bowl right there. Let's give it a try. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. Tell me how that tastes. Tell you what, it looks great. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a give it a taste test. The peaches are awesome. Really, really peachy. Not overtaken by sugar. Like it probably would have been, you know, if we'd have put more sugar in it. The, the crust part, I'm not sure about. It's more like a biscuit. And that's what the recipe actually says. It's a sweet biscuit. It's real, uh, it's real flaky, not flaky, but light, uh, not like uh, my normal, I use more of a pie crust type of uh, dough on my normal peach cobbler, but it's still really good. So while I go ahead and eat this here right in front of you, please go ahead and uh, if you like what we're doing, hit that like button right down there to subscribe to our channel. You can do it right there. For another great Backwoods Gourmet video, it's going to be right up there. And for a whole playlist cooking with this Lodge cooking all, it's going to be right up there. We'll see you next time.